Okay, good afternoon. My name is Giorgio Di Mino. I'm going to talk you a little bit about a new feature that we have introduced in the specification of FIMS 1.1 that is just out in these days. And it's about the content part support. First of all, what is FIMS? FIMS is a, a, a framework for interoperable media services. It's a joint initiative between uh, the European Broadcasting Union and the Advanced Media Workflow Association. The FIMS concept is that of uh, uh, optimizing the media supply chain workflow via standardizing the interfaces between the various components that are needed to properly manage and process uh, media content. The idea is to reduce the resilience on proprietary solutions via standardized interfaces and allow the workflow to dictate the infrastructure rather than the other way around so that different uh, services, appliances that do the same job uh, will speak the same language and will be uh, automatically interoperable between each other. The main concept behind FIMS is the service-oriented architecture paradigm that is a way of rationalizing the way components are interconnected on a media bus to uh, process content and to uh, contribute to generate a workflow. The objective of this specific project about content parts is that to provide FIMS the ability to process only portions of contents that are already existing and available without having to move uh, uh, or process the, the entire file uh, that is already there. So that, for example, you can uh, retrieve from a repository, let's say the first 10 seconds uh, of long files that may last two hours. You don't need all of them, you just need the head to know what it's about. Then you can ask to the repository just that specific portion in this, the repository itself that is extracting the part and giving it to you. The same for the transformation, you, you want to transcode only a small part of your content or you want to stitch several parts together and make a new content. This can be done using the existing service with just a small updates to the interface that is what we have developed here. The business use cases that are behind that are, for example, in uh, program planning, in, uh, in the ingest or, or in the live program, you need to extract highlights to be uh, edited while the program is still going on, for example, so that the file is still there, you don't want to move the entire file, you just want to get that specific clip, you can do it. In acquisition, you can ingest some raw content, you can automatically extract the good part of it without having first to move it to another location and then analyze it. In production, for example, you're uh, acquiring your archive, you need some clip, you extract only the clip from, uh, from the archive. You can generate a playlist and stitch together the various parts and send them to the playout as a finished product. So the basic functionality that we are uh, providing is that if you have a piece of content that is described by uh, a descriptor that we have in the interface, this is called BM content that contains all the metadata, the technical metadata and uh, structural metadata, information about the location of the essence file and so on and so forth about the media. This is the object of the service that is being processed that you want to transfer, transform, or analyze in a way. You can complement the request with a content part item that is a descriptor that tells the service don't use the entire content, just to use a portion of that and you provide all the information that is needed. The result will be that only that part will be processed and it will generate a new BM content. So it will be made available as a new content with a new identifier but it will still contain all this information to come back to the source.
this is the modification that we have done. We have just added this uh, content park item. Uh, I will show later uh, how this is used. Uh, the content part item contains the reference ID, the new identifiers of the source content for the BM content from which you want to extract the part. It will contain the start and will contain the duration of, uh, of the segment that you want to extract. There are also defaults so that if you don't want to give all the parameters, they are defaulting to the beginning of the file and the entire duration. And then you can also provide a destination ID so that the newly generated content may have the ID that you want to provide or if you don't provide it, it will be automatically generated by the service. This is used in a, in a transfer request for example in a transform request. Let's see uh, just as an, as an example the transfer that is a simpler. A transfer request is a descriptor that contains a version to know uh, which version of the, of the specification you are referring to and the transfer job. The transfer job contains all the general uh, job information about uh, queuing, about the priorities, about the starting time and all of this stuff and it will contain also the list of objects that you want to transfer. And it contains all profiles and the profiles uh, tells you, for example, what is the destination, so where you want to put this content, and which destination, and the extension that we did is that now you can also specify content part atom, so of some of these game uh, objects that we have uh, listed, I don't want to transfer all of them, but I want to transfer only parts. And there are no limitations, so from a, a single uh, BM content I can extract several parts in, in several positions. And we have also added a whole content atom. This is just to tell the service that some content needs to transfer entirely. So this is uh, equivalent to the old way of working of the service where you had the always the transfer of the entire content. Now uh, to separate which content should be transferred completely and which content should be used only to extract parts, we have done to separate uh, atoms. For the transform it's the same thing basically. Another feature that we have added that leverages on, on, the, on, the, on the parts and is using inside of the transform service is the simple EDL. Simple EDL means that we are taking parts from different contents and we are splicing them together to make a new content that is then transformed according to the transform uh, profile and a new content is generated and sent to a destination. Uh, the limitation that we have is that we don't support in this version transitions or effects and that cannot be overlap or alls uh, in the parts. So they will be just spliced one after the other. And also that they must have the same content format uh, at the beginning to simplify the operation of the service itself. And there are several use cases that can benefit from there, for example, uh, content compilation. Uh, I want to distribute a single object that contains a list uh, of, uh, uh, of clips that have to be played one after the other, uh, highlights and trailers uh, for, for uh, sports, for example, news cut edit, promos. Uh, I have, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the commercial uh, segments. Uh, I don't want to send uh, the bumper any single commercial and the end bumper. I want to send just one, one, uh, one piece of content that is sent to the playout server, for example. So the simple ideal atom. Uh, it contains uh, a list of ordered parts and a destination ID. The destination ID tells uh, the ID of the newly generated content and the ordered part contains 
the list of parts that will be used with their position number so that I know that from content XYZ I will extract the first and second this will be the first part and then from content whatever I will extract another 20 seconds this will be the second part and so on and so forth and this is using the transform profile so the, the transform request will contain a transform job that will contain and will have also transform profiles transform profile will have uh, the, the transform atom that tells me uh, in which format I want to transform the result a transfer atom that tells me where I want to put the result and then I will have the content part atom that tells me that I want to extract parts and transform them and send them to the destination the all content part we already talked about that and the simple ideal atom that tells me that I want to stitch parts together a third feature that has been uh, uh, included is the ability uh, to annotate uh, IBM content using time-related metadata in the previous version you could uh, add as many metadata as you want descriptive technical uh, structural but they were referring to the entire uh, media file in this version uh, we can attach a timeline to the BM content and under the timeline I can define segment and attach metadata to each segment so the metadata contextual to the specific segment and the segments can be further decomposed so I can build a tree of metadata this is the main uh, form of the BM content that contains uh, descriptive metadata and media descriptors that tell me where are the media files technical metadata that are specific to the video audio and container with the BM content part together with the BM content that describes the entire content I can describe any single part and this will be referred so the BM content part is just in the BM content I add timelines that are nice is a container that can contain one or more timelines so I can have several parallel decomposition for example to carry different type of metadata maybe I want to keep uh, descriptive metadata separate from a technical metadata for some reason or depending on the source or the reason why I notated this thing or another thing I may want to have different timelines and a timeline just contains a list of segments and a segment is an abstract type that needs to be specified depending on the usage today we have uh, specified the segment as a BM content part BM content parts contain start and duration that tells me where this is located inside the BM content um, a spatial scope that let me in some way describe uh, for example that I want to I'm referring only to some track of, of my content not to all of them this refers only to the video or only to the audio or some specific part of the audio and then I can have uh, technical metadata in the BM content part format descriptive metadata in the description type or origin metadata that tells me the provenance of my content for example in the previous features that I've described the parts and the simple EDL the newly generated BM content will contain already origin metadata so the BM content will be complemented with a timeline that will contain uh, the reference information of the part and the uh, position of that part in the original file from which it was extracted so if it is for example a simple EDL you will have all the parts uh, that are the parts that have been stitched one after the other and each of them will point to the source content and will tell me within the source content which part has been extracted so I have a full provenance metadata here um, the final things is uh, the modification to 
uh, the repository interface that let me request from a repository a part of some content. In this case, uh, the modification is very simple. In the retrieve essence request, we have add some uh, elements that are optional as usual. You can define a start and duration, and you can define an essence name. Uh, what happens then is that the BM content that you are requested, from that it will be extracted uh, only a part, a new, a new BM content will be generated that will point to the essence file that will be generated extracting the part that you are requesting from the original essence file. So a new essence file will be created with a name defined here and a new BM content will be generated that will point to this essence file. In uh, the uh, notification that you get back, therefore you, you will get uh, the new BM content, but you will, uh, with location of course, of the SS file that, that contains the part, and you will get also all the source content. Uh, why we send back the source content? Because uh, there may be some metadata that you want to retrieve, and extracting them automatically may be uh, unsecure, because you never know when you cut some essence which metadata still apply and which not. And it's practically impossible to do that automatically if you don't know um, the type of metadata that you are processing. So what we do is to provide it back and let the user or a more uh, sophisticated application to do the filtering of metadata and, and to put them back in the cases needed. And that's it for the VM content part.